I got you. How many more years do you think you're going to be building homes? I'm, I refuse to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Carr here for another episode of the Bob Carr Show. In the studio today, I have Mr. Gary Koch. Mr. You, Koch, Bob? I appreciate you coming in today. Well, it's good to be here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I want to talk about the beginning of Coke Homes with your dad. Okay. Years ago, I was sitting talking to you with your dad, and he was telling me that uh, right after World War II, he had gotten out of the service. He was teaching people how to fly, and uh, he started up in the Pasadena area, building homes. But yep. he, but you were just telling me prior to coming on air that uh, he had a sales background. He did. He worked for, I believe the gentleman's name was Stallings, uh, north of Baltimore. He and another gentleman, Henry Booker, were salesmen. Mm. And they both uh, worked for Stallings for years. And then they eventually decided at some point that they wanted to venture out on their own, which of course they did. And they formed the Booker & Coke realty company mm. and after they formed that their first endeavor was really north shore a property that my uh, grandfather had actually purchased back in the 30s and he had built this summer home there and he in turn subdivided it was i think roughly 200 acres and he subdivided the 200 acres into multiple lots which became north shore community on the magathy it had thousands and thousands of feet of waterfront on the Magathy, which mm. back then was a pretty remote location uh, if you were coming from Baltimore. Um, but that's where they started and they just grew the business slowly over time there. I got gotcha. you. And when, when did you get involved in the business? I, I graduated uh, from graduate business school uh, in 1977 and came back and joined the company at that point. You were working summer, I take it, during college? Oh, yeah. All during my high school years, I'd work for my dad in the summer. Dad wasn't working for your dad back then? Oh, he was good. <laughs> good to work with? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Hey. Always a fair, honest. He always he comes across um, as easy to work with. Easy to work with, but uh, always set an example. You know, hard worker. Wanted you there on time. Wanted you to work. You know, if you were going to put in eight hours a day he wanted the eight hours a day so that's was, what we did was your mom involved in business back then not too much my mom uh had been actually working for a dentist uh years ago okay and then after she had my brother and i she was a stay-at-home mom and uh encouraging to my dad but not uh in directly involved in the business i got you so when you finished college you started working with your dad closer and closer on the business side of it oh absolutely after i got out of uh business uh, school, we went ahead and our first community was Whipper Will Estates. Okay. He had just started that. Uh, he was doing a few additions uh, in North Shore and had just started the first, I think it was four homes at Whipper Will Estates. And it was a community of roughly 35, I think, total houses. And I came in and that was our first uh, project that we did together. And then I developed a quick interest uh, in land development, mm -hmm. uh, which he had not done too much of. He had been primarily a smaller custom builder. And I became interested in the development aspect where we were negotiating with sellers uh, who owned ground and going ahead and contracting to have it subdivided. Uh, and then after we had it subdivided, we would settle the property. And back then we would put in the site work and the improvements and we would either keep the lots for ourselves or we'd go ahead and sell them to another builder uh, on a finished lot takedown basis. I got you. And that's the part of the business that expanded, for me at least. But you, you've uh, always enjoyed that part of it? I have. That's always been kind of my keen interest. Uh, we've always built homes, uh, but the land development aspect for me was um, what was exciting. I remember, I don't know if this is true, I never talked to you directly about this, but I remember one time I used to always hear on the street that Coke Homes or Coke, uh, one of your identities had more building lots available and you guys controlled more than anybody else in Anne Arundel County. In Anne Arundel County, that very well could have been. I got gotcha. you. Um, over the years, we've probably developed the 45 years that I've been 
um, with the company, which was from 77 to current. We've developed roughly, I'd say 7,500, maybe upwards of 8,000 lots. Wow. And of those, we've built maybe 2,500 homes. Uh, and then the balance we've sold to mainly national builders. I got gotcha. you. Ryan Homes of the world. I got you. I was talking to Brian Marshall the day. Sure. He said you guys had a, uh, some homes that you were building over in Easton. Yes. We've, uh, the land opportunity and availability in Anne Arundel County over the, particularly the recent years, has really shrunk. Um, there's just fewer and fewer opportunities. The opportunities that are available um, are more infill. There aren't many large parcels mm. anymore. Um, all those have been accounted for, developed. Uh, and then if you do have a piece that you're working on right now in the county, it's become increasingly difficult to get your approvals. You've probably heard that from, oh, yeah. from other people. Yes, sir. So with the fewer opportunities and the longer process to get things approved, uh, we've had basically less and less opportunities immediately in this county, mm. which has forced us to look elsewhere. And right now we're uh, building and looking for opportunities on the Eastern shore. I got you. How many more years do you think you're going to be building homes? Um, I refuse to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do your daughters have any interest? No, no. They're both in uh, the Boston area gotcha. married. They're stay at home moms. Okay. Uh, they each have three children and um, they have no interest and their husbands are in the, the Boston area uh, gotcha. engaged in business and gotcha. has nothing to do with residential development or construction. So what, what do you think is going to happen? What are you going to do with the business going forward? If you're going to retire? No, I won't retire. We have a handful of uh, really good. Get rich. Uh, you got people. a lot of good people. Yeah, we do. We have a handful, probably five key people. Uh, both on the development and on the home building side. And they'll continue to move things forward um, as I continue to probably take more time with the grandkids and, and step That's back That's good that you can do bit. that, though. A lot of people can't. A lot of people don't think about it that far in advance. Oh, no. I, I, I definitely want to plan for that. Yeah, that's yeah, good. They've got six of them now that are all under the age of five. Wow. And then Lois has three. So between us, you know, nine. So it keeps us that's good. Keeps us pretty busy. Yeah, it's great. What's wrong with that? Yeah. Mr. Koch, I appreciate you coming in today and spending a couple minutes with us. Absolutely. I've been wanting to sit and interview and talk with you and have you on here for a while. So it's an honor to have you in. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. You've always been a great contractor for us, and I appreciate everything you've done for us over the years. Likewise, sir. This wraps up another episode of the Bob Carr Show, and we'll see you guys again next week on another episode.